Okay, I would now request Dr. Siddharth uh, with his presentation. Uh, there was an under-19 player in uh, 2014 World Cup. He was the Indian captain for the Indian team, Unmuk Chand. Greg Chappell said at that point of time that this guy is so talented, he should directly go into the Indian 11 without any further experience. So he's right now in the US playing in the US league. He, he didn't have a very great career. At the same point of time, Sunil Gavaskar has also said that this guy is going to get into the Indian team. There are situations when we see and when we feel something, but then numbers don't lie. I think uh, there are multiple studies where in phacomorphic glaucoma, sir, I would also be on Dr. Mandal's side. It has been shown irrespective of how much synechia you have and for a duration of presentation of one month or lesser, plain cataract surgery works. Not only in terms of intraocular, the intraocular pressure control was better, the intraop complications were lesser and this was uh, the post-op complications were lesser. So in all aspects, we have a very strong recommendation to have, uh, because we were earlier doing combined surgeries for patients who presented beyond seven days. So we had a good comparative sample. So with that, I will move to uh, the topic that I have, FACO emulsification with glaucoma drainage device. Thank you, Dr. Debashish for having me. Uh, I will cover my top, uh, talk under these sections. Now, unlike uh, combined surgeries where if you have a significant cataract, sometimes when you are operating the cataract, you also do a trabeculectomy. This is a situation that is different. Here, you would do a FACO emulsification along with GDD only when the GDD is indicated. So the indications here basically are indications that are same as those for a glaucoma implant. And if there is a significant cataract, you also do the cataract surgery along with the glaucoma drainage device. Uh, again, except for situations like neovascular glaucoma and uveitic glaucoma, you would be a little skeptical about doing if they are not well controlled. If they are well controlled uh, neovascular glaucoma, well controlled uveitic glaucoma, you can do the cataract surgery also along with that. There are certain advantages. The biggest advantage in terms of implant surgery, if you are doing a uh, Cataract, uh, cataract surgery along with it is that you make the sulcus available for the placement of the tube. Now the biggest problem that we usually face apart from glaucoma related problems in implants is the corneal endothelial cell loss. And the sulcus is such a nice place to put the tube in is that is, that is so much preferred over the uh, is anterior chamber placement. And as we discussed, it is easier to manage complications, complications associated with uh, shallow anterior chamber also, you give the patient a feeling of improvement in visual acuity, which you can't give with just a, a glaucoma surgery. And when you combine two procedures, you're all, always uh, reducing the number of OR and OPD visits for the patient, so it benefits them also. There are certain challenges uh, or disadvantages that you can have. Any complication in cataract surgery may affect the success of the glaucoma procedure also. So it is very important to have as minimal complications especially those which can cause more inflammation uh, to, uh, to be avoided. The operating time is uh, a little longer. For, uh, for a surgeon who is not a cornea or retina surgeon, anything more than 30 minutes, the brain kind of goes into a freeze. So that time increases. Also, in a patient, when you're doing a combined glaucoma and uh, cataract procedure, you, I would recommend not to use the toric oil. As the bleb evolves, as the pressure goes up or down, the astigmatism is going to change. So a toric oil cannot be placed along with a tube, but if you have a patient who has had a tube uh, an year back, and you now have a stable intraocular pressure, you have a stable keratometry, you can place a toric oil later. Uh, multifocal oils, of course, are a strict no-no for patients with, uh, uh, the, uh, with glaucoma, and uh, you have a greater need for steroids in patients when you do a cataract surgery. Whereas in patients with a tube where, which is, Dr. Mandel always keeps saying that glaucoma surgery is an extraocular procedure almost because the only time you enter is when you make an osteum or put the tube in. So there is a lesser need of steroids in glaucoma procedures uh, if you compare with uh, the uh, cataract surgery, especially when you have a steroid response. 
then you will have to have a balance between the two. The surgical technique needs to be modified a little bit when you are doing an implant along with a cataract surgery. So you have to manipulate the globe, pull the globe up and down, uh, fix it, and while you are fixating the implant 8 millimeters behind the limbus, the globe has to be pulled up. You don't want to do all that in a globe which has an open cataract incision or even a paracentesis. The AC can shallow, and when, while you are not looking at it because it's really under the lower lid, things may happen. So you don't want to do that. That is why you fixate the implant before opening the globe so that you don't have to go really that posterior. Also, it is usually preferable to do a temporal incision for your cataract surgery and suture it. Of course, any glaucoma surgery can cause shallowing, so you want to suture it. Shallowing can also be a problem when you are using hydrophobic uh, foldable IOLs, which don't have that much of a rigidity, uh, and that is why the rexis, when you do a combined surgery, is also slightly smaller. It won't make a 3 millimeter rexis, which makes your FACO very difficult, but something around 4.5, 4.75, which has a greater security for your IL that, that it will stay behind. And as I said, no multifocal or toric IELs in these patients. So this is a video by Dr. Sirisha, who was actually supposed to do this talk, but has been generous enough to share this video. So it basically starts with a traction suture. Uh, it, 8-0 vehicle can be used for the traction suture. The incision you can see here is being made at the limbus but it can be made uh, 4.5, uh, 4 to 5 millimeters behind the limbus, also giving you greater security of thicker tenons. And then uh, we use a Stevens tenotomy scissors to dissect the conjunctiva in the pocket, conjunctival pocket, and then place the implant there. The basic thing is the implant should go and sit there. It should not be peeping out of that conjunctival pocket. And if it keeps peeking out, it means that the space has not been created well enough and you are have a greater chance of implant relate implant dislocation hypertensive phase and you have to prime an agv here this is a fp7 model and after priming when when you have made sure that the valve is patent you just push it back uh, we use a 9-0 proline suture to fixate the implant 8 millimeters behind the uh, limbus and put around 7 to 8 knots in the proline suture. After that, the phaco emulsification can be carried out in a standard manner. Uh, of course, you have to be careful that uh, you don't have complications. The, uh, the rexis is being performed here. And then the phaco emulsification is completed in the manner uh, the surgeon uh, prefers to do it. Thoracortical wash is a must in any combined surgery. So in a cataract surgery, leaving a little bit of cortex is okay. But in a combined surgery, you want minimal inflammation. Don't leave any viscoelastic behind. Don't leave any cortex behind. So we are very particular of that. Uh, needle track is made with a 24 gauge needle. You place it at the limbus, the tube, and cut it, uh, leave a two millimeter residual length beyond the uh, incision. A 10 0 cross suture or a box suture can be placed to fixate the tube, and then a graft is placed in such a manner that it covers the entire track of the tube. There are multiple ways of uh, suturing the conjunctiva, but after the uh, IA, basically, you can use a combination of interrupted and continuous suture using 8-0 vicryl to close the conjunctival incision. This incision also has to be watertight because there will be some fluid that will flow anteriorly. So this patient, as you see, is doing very well. Post-operatively, uh, we typically use prednisolone acetate if the patient is not a steroid responder. A patient who is a known steroid responder or you get a steroid response which is identified by presence of a good spongy bleb but the pressure going high very soon after initiating the steroids, we can shift to lotiprednol and uh, taper it more rapidly. More antibiotic is given for a week, homotropin for, uh, for about two weeks and nevenac is something that we typically, nepafenac is something that we typically use. There are two medications 
which are also indicated here. We typically give doxycycline to these patients for the first two weeks, 100 milligrams uh, uh, twice daily. 100 milligrams twice daily for the first two weeks. And the moment the intraocular pressure goes above 10 millimeters of mercury, we start one anti-glaucoma medication. It is known to reduce the extent, duration, and severity of the hypertensive